we are going to recap a little bit where we got last class with the Unix system five file system. And then we're going to look at the kinds of things that are done in modern file systems to get better performance, better reliability, better robustness, and deal with different kinds of media. This is a recap of what we looked at last class. So this is Unix system five. We're storing a map for a file within an inode. We've got a disk map. It has pointers to blocks on the disk. The first 10 of these point to a single block. And then the later one can point to an indirect block to give us more file storage. And it will take longer to reach those files. What does a directory look like? So this is all just what's in an inode. How do we find our files? What are directories? None of this is a directory yet. Right? This is just an inode. This is part of an inode that we're looking at. What a file is, is some metadata, including a pointer to an inode. And the inode has pointers to actual data. If you want to do something like ls, well, you get a list of file names. So there's something keeping track of this directory tree. And it has mappings between file names and inodes as part of it. So what do you think the directory is? Do we need something special for that? Yes. Good, yeah. We don't need anything special for that. We're just going to store that on the disk. It's just like any other file, except for what's in it is information about the file structure, information about that directory. So all that we're going to have in a directory is this is a file. So we're going to have some inode. As its disk map, it's got some block that contains, as its contents, a data structure, which is just a list of file names and the inode that stores that file. That's all a directory is. It's just a file. It might be more than one block. It can be any number of blocks or any number of blocks that we can fit. It's just a very simple data structure that has file names and inode numbers. And then we've got the one special one, the dot dot, tells us what the parent directory is. But that's also just another file name. So that's just an inode. So we don't have to do anything special for directories. And Unix System 5 does it. Just has a particular way of storing them as a data structure in a file on the disk. Still thinking about Unix System 5, what are all the things that you have to do to create a new file? So we got to this at the end of last class saying, well, what you do in your program is you do something like call fopen. And you're giving a file name, and you're saying you want to create a new file for writing. What the fopen call does, that's a library. That's part of the C library. And that's eventually going to make some system call that is needed to create the file. So what is that system call going to do? What are all the things you have to do in this file system structure to create a file? OK, so I didn't specify what system call is. So there's a system call open. And um, I think that takes the same parameters as fopen. What fopen does is at some point going to call open. In terms of what we actually have to do to make open work, so if we are implementing the system call that is used to create a new file, what are the things it needs to do? OK. Right. So we're going to have to put that file name in the directory. So we had a directory. Now we've created a new file. So we're going to have to modify the contents of the file that represent the directory that we're putting the new file in to include a new name. So let's say we do that. We've got our new file. So we're going to have to add an entry here. What should its inode value be? How do we pick the inode for the new file? Can we just pick any inode we want? Can we pick, let's say, I'm making a new file. I'm going to pick my inode. I'll pick that number as my inode. Is that OK? So how many inodes do we have? Some finite number, right? There's some fixed number of inodes. We better pick one that's not already used. If we pick one that's already being used by some other file, well, we can't have two files using the same inode unless they're linking to the same content. In this case, we're creating a new file. It better not use an inode that is already being used. So part of what we have to do to create a new file is find a new inode. So how do we find a new inode? Well, we've got to keep track of ones that are being used and ones that are not. The way that works on the disk, this is the whole disk. Most of the things on the disk are data. And they're blocks that are pointed to by the disk map and some inode. There's also some things that we need to have at fixed locations. We need some starting point. So there's some sector on the disk that is designated as the boot block. And that's at some fixed location. And that's not going to move. And then there's also 
a location that's keeping track of free blocks. So we have some list that we keep up to date that says here's all the blocks that are not currently being used. So when we need a new one, that's the one we can pick. The way that works in System 5 is really simple. It's just a list. Each one of these is a pointer to an unused block. And then the last one points to another list. So it's just a linked list where each one has 99 free blocks. In it. That's keeping track of it. That's going to be a fairly expensive way to find a free block so there's a cache to make it faster. We have in the list of inodes a cache that's making it easy to, to look up a bitmap saying which ones are free. In order to find a free one, we've just got to find one that's free. Then we're going to have to do lots of other things. And I'm not going to go into those details today. There is a chapter from the recommended text that actually is, is really good about this and goes into all those details. I'm not going to do that now, but there's a lot of other things that you're going to need to do to really create the file. 